Welcome to Altium Designer Shaping the PCB. In this module, we will create and modify the PCB shape using a number of methods. Let's start by looking at the Bluetooth Sentinel example project. This is a flex rigid design as you saw in our last module having the stack up as you see here. There are two stacks defined, rigid and flex. In a typical rigid PCB, there would only be one stack as you would expect. Looking at this example shows us the planning done for a rigid flex design at the layer stack level. We need at least one rigid stack and one flex. This is normal 2D viewing mode. Let's take a look at this design in a viewing mode called board planning. To enter board planning mode, press the number one key. Zooming in on the board, we can select each of the defined regions starting with the top circle and then the bottom circle and finally the middle section which uses the flex stack up. Zooming back out, we can switch to 2D, then 3D mode by first hitting the 2 key and then the 3 key. Let's turn our attention to the standard default PCB. We see the typical black PCB board outline in 2D mode. Hitting the 1 key puts us into board planning mode. This special mode provides tools for the modification and customization of the PCB shape under the design drop down menu. To stretch out a board edge, simply move on to the line edge and it will highlight and the mouse pointer changes to a bi-directional arrow. Now, with the line highlighted and the arrow showing, left-click on the line and hold, dragging the mouse to resize it. This is a convenient way to increase or decrease the board along an edge. If a more elaborate change is needed, like changing the end point of the board segments, click on the solid box and move the mouse to alter its shape. Again, Control z is our friend if you don't like or want to keep the change. Likewise, you can move the center box vertex to adjust it by using the Control key holding it down, and using the mouse to click and drag it. If we need to add to the overall board shape using the mouse, we can employ the Modify Board Shape option from the Design pull-down menu. Now attached to the mouse is a vertice, allowing us to create an additional board shape. Now using Edit Board Shape, we can adjust the PCB to remove some of the unneeded segments until they are absorbed or combined by the move. We could continue to modify the board as needed. One more flexible option is the redefine board shape. Using this, we can create any shape needed by left clicking to place endpoints. Once we have a closed shape, or a closed shape can be inferred from the current points, we can right click to close it and create the PCB. As long as we are in board editing mode, we can continue to tune PCB shape directly. We should talk about the concept of the board origin. Under the edit menu, there's an entry called origin. Use the set option to enable mouse placement on the X and Y 0, 0 coordinates like so. This makes sizing the board much easier and also creates a cleaner way of placing components on the board with fixed coordinates. Up to this point, we have been creating the board shape without any aids to guide us. Using grids can provide a faster and more accurate means to generate the board shape. Clicking G on the keyboard loads the grid menu. We then select Set Global Snap Grid. We can now change the grids to something reasonable for our purposes. So if we want a 3 by 6 and a half inch board, we would set the grid to 500 mils. This gives us the largest possible granularity that we could use. Now we can move the board vertices in 500 mil steps. Using the edit board shape now with the grid set, it's easy to get our target size board utilizing both the newly set origin and grid. Grabbing a side, we can stretch it until its location indicated on the bottom of the screen is right on the coordinates. In this case, we are looking for a 6500 in the X and a 3000 in the Y. Now we have the board accurately sized. The snap grids for X and Y can be set independently. Clicking again on the grid icon and selecting snap grid X or snap grid Y to enter different grid values. Going back to the normal 2D view of the PCB, we can explore another option for generating the board shape. Using the mouse-based methods we just used are basic, but somewhat limited. In Altium, it's possible to define the PCB shape from primitives, consisting of connected lines, arcs, or circles, again, all of this using graphics. The simplest one to use is a circle. Here, we select a circle and place its center and outer edge. With it selected, and it is important that it is selected, click on Design, Board Shape, Defined from Selected Objects. As you can see, this works quite well. 
By the way, don't forget to delete the original graphics and reset the origin. Any closed shape can be used for this. If the shape is not closed, some weird results or warnings may occur. We can always regenerate from the board shape, placing the primitives on any layer. Using Design, Board Shape, Create Primitives from Board Shape option, set the line width and the layer for the generated primitives. I usually use this feature sometimes to put the board outline on a particular layer that the Fab House can use. When a complicated board shape is used, using a template to drive the board shape is preferred. With Altium, it is possible to generate a PCB from a DXF file that a mechanical CAD engineer has generated. First, we would need the DXF file for importing the PCB. Now, to import the DXF file, go to File, Import, DXF DWG, and enter the DXF file. This brings up the Import Configuration window. The critical part is to ensure that the scale selected matches the units of the DXF file when it is created. One easy check is to look at the projected size to see if it is right and adjust as needed for your particular file. Now the other useful option is to determine where in the PCB view the DXF primitives will be placed. Use the Select button and place the origin in a good place to allow room for the DXF import. I've seen DXF files with their origin in the middle, top, or bottom. It helps to know where the file's origin is when you place it in the PCB space. Notice there are three entries in the import window. Source layer 0, board shape, and title block. These are mapped to different layers in the PCB stack, and they will all be generated when we import. Hitting OK, you will see the DXF primitives placed. Notice that there is more than just the board outline, like we said. This can be confusing as the projected size of the DXF file does not reflect what you expect the PCB to be. Now with the board outline primitive selected, we can use the Design, Board Shape, Define from Selected Objects again to create the new PCB. One thing again to note, delete the primitives as they are no longer needed. This concludes Module 17, Shaping the PCB, where we looked at various ways to create the PCB shape, including reshaping an existing PCB, creating one using the mouse, creating one from primitives, and lastly from the DXF file imported. Please do exercise 17.